When a nation or an industry decides to benefit from the intelligence of external threats, particularly around cyber, there's just too much information. So our analysis is basically on all the information. We actually don't bring much information. Yeah. We help validate and narrow down the information such that your nation or your internal analysts know the right information to be working on. Philippines are a great example of, uh, of a nation that has already invested well, heavily and cleverly on defence infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And those defence infrastructures are traditional things like firewalls, endpoint detection, email gateways. And they do two things, allow traffic or disallow bad traffic. Right. Uh, but with the abundance of badness happening in cyberspace, uh, it's very difficult to get correct, valid, precise information to them. A lot of the available resources that we have currently, since because there's a huge demand for cybersecurity professionals, a lot are being um, uh, hired by international companies uh, outside of the Philippines. And that increases our um, uh, need for cybersecurity professionals. Second, we, I don't think we have um, adequate programs yet um, in the um, acad academy to be able to train more professionals on cybersecurity. Although I know they've, the, our government have already started looking at um, embedding um, some new concepts in order to prepare the workforce in the future to have more cyber professionals mm -hmm. to help um, address this need. Being, having the ability to exchange threat intelligence information um, that each organization, be it the government or the private sector, be comfortable enough to talk about threats in its just vanilla threats. Yeah. We don't have to say who, uh -huh. we just need to share this information. Is this information is the key to providing us the, the solutions in terms of security. Um, we can't say one industry or the next has the better approach, but together with the shared vision or a shared um, knowledge of what's facing us, we can then secure it better. Is that there's a lot of threat information out there, yeah. but it's actually not intelligence. It's not intelligence until you've looked at it through your perspective. Yeah. If there's intelligence information about ATM skimming fraud in Finland, and you don't have ATMs and you don't do business in Finland, that's not intelligence. That's right. right so yeah. so um, through filtering, uh, machine learning, and some um, education of the system by your government or by their analysts, it's easier to kind of cull out irrelevant traffic. Okay. So in direct response to, to your question, uh, the information is actually gold when it becomes intelligence and we can help fast track that. To understand exactly what uh, what we are protecting, um, again, uh, the attacker is going to come in many different forms, uh, but it is going to go for your most needed assets. What are those important to you? Um, so that's back to basics: is understanding what do you have, what information are you protecting, and then those are the building blocks. Because for those things, you have to have. Basically, I know what I'm protecting and I know what I need to protect it with. And that's what I mean by basics. Um, because there's many, many technology tools, there's many um, processes out there, but if you don't put them together um, and integrate them correctly, it's not going to work.
it's you have to strengthen the identity access management system. So it's not just uh, technology, you can get the best uh, technology there out there, but uh, if you don't have the process backing it up and also the proper people who are in there, the proper trusted people who are running the, the IAM show, then uh, it, will not, it will be for naught. So if you have a, a strong IAM system in place, so uh, again with the technology in place, the process to back it up and also the, the trusted people who are there, uh, this will eliminate around 90% of the of the insider threats. And aside from that, if you have uh, adaptive or uh, machine learning strategies, which uh, which can check uh, the behavior of people. So, if for example, I'm I'm a normal user and I, I really don't uh, use USBs, and then suddenly I change and uh, I, I want to use a USB, then uh, uh, that that behavior is out of the ordinary. And if it this doesn't get flagged, uh, the if the infosec guys or, don't, or ladies don't know about it, then uh, it, it will fly under the radar and that's a possible entry point for these malicious insiders. I think uh, if you were a hacker, the, you would focus not on what would give you a big problem, but would give you the easier way to hack inside the uh, organization, which is essentially the, the users, the humans in the organization. Right. They also need to be aware of what the enemy is uh, up to, how the enemy is using technology uh, to, to get, get access into your computer, into your network, and into your company data. Uh, so focusing just on technology is only addressing Half of the half of the defense, the other defense, the other half should be focusing on user education, user awareness, and uh, equipping your users to be more vigil vigilant. There was a report that was published last year, wherein they are saying that the epicenter of uh, child pornography materials is Philippines. Uh, we don't know where they got the uh, statistics, but somehow we believe that this is an issue. Child pornography is really an issue in this country. Yeah, we are trying to encourage uh, corporations uh, to participate in this campaign as part of their corporate social responsibility. Right. And they will be really a big help, especially the financial institutions, yeah. where the money passes through yeah. for those materials. Yeah. But you have a country like the Philippines that's unique because it's one of two com countries, Philippines and Poland, that allow direct Facebook moderation. So Facebook can moderate a newsfeed. Right? That means they can get the data and they can share it right? to, to developers and all that. Yep. So a social media game, for example, have backdoors, whether or not they meant to, right? but you have people who will do bad with that. So you have an opening, you take all those people's data and you can change conversation. right? You, you can change, you can watch my behavior, for example, and you can see I'm, I'm leaning a certain way. My conversations are a certain way. You pick up on all these keywords, right? And you target that person and their psyche to vote differently. First is you have to demand accountability. Mm -hmm. IT security is not just uh, the responsibility of the IT security team. It is the responsibility of everyone from the president down to the security guard. The second is you have to uh, uh, change the belief system, which is the B part. Uh, again, by training. And the third is you have to cultivate culture. Now, what is the most effective way for people to learn? That's, the, that's the, the challenge. And as I mentioned, you have to give them experiential learning. So it is not just sitting and watching a video and then clicking a test after people will have to experience what it is to behave well and be rewarded and what it is to behave, to misbehave and be penalized. Mm -hmm. 
And this should be consistent and this should be repeated until the goals of the company in terms of cybersecurity awareness are attained.